There's a group of men who have low testosterone and they may be of a reproductive age and the knee-jerk response in the field has really been to give testosterone replacement which is something that you'd have to consider for 80 years and a lot of these men present with sexual health issues as the first thing they ever present with. So this would be a way to, to we need a, a better strategy to handle uh, the reproductive sexual health issues in these men besides using testosterone because testosterone is an established contraceptive. Well, testosterone is a variety of causes. Um, I gave a lecture at Google, talked about the planetary view. So uh, four or five of them might be metabolic syndrome. So I can, you know, so obesity, diabetes. Um, corticosteroid treatment, anabolic steroids uh, will cause low testosterone when they finish. Hemochromatosis, genetic disorders, varicocele, there's about a dozen easy to rattle off. And, and then the basic ones, sleep disorders. Sleep disorders, which is, you know, we're getting an hour less sleep per night per decade. So it's not a fringe problem. I would call it a bit of an epidemic. Um, it's not diabetes, but it's pretty close. Um, there are a group of young, healthy, reproductive age men who have low testosterone, often presenting as infertility, which is the basis of my practice and when I see them. And they really don't have any doctors. So they go to endocrinologists or, or other doctors and they, get, and they get fractionated care. And so I'm, after, I'm actually, in this lecture, talking a lot about how it's an opportunity to serve men, the underserved, which are the young men in, in, uh, in medicine. Young, young, young men are relatively underserved. In, in a sexual health practice, a men's health practice that I have in California, it's mainly low sex drive, poor erections, and then the other things that go along with the low T syndromes like energy, fatigue, um, you know, work performance, things like that. And so the, you know, they'll see the ads on TV and they'll say, that's me. And, but most of those are not specific for testosterone. But you do take the opportunity to examine young men maybe for the first time when they come in with those things. So it's a nice way for medicine to get their foot in the door and not give them testosterone, but take care of them. There are alternatives to testosterone in young men and many of their problems are not permanent. And if you put them on testosterone replacement, you will hurt their fertility, and you'll put them on a permanent therapy that has ramifications for decades. And taking care of them involves what I talked about in the lecture, which is look at the planetary view of what might be going on in this guy's life and stress, sleep, disorders, medications, drugs, and figure it out that way. And don't use testosterone, but use alternatives that I consider more bioidentical, like CIRM therapy, so selective estrogen receptor modulators like Clomid, and tamoxifen, which aren't approved for this for men, and HCG therapy, which is LH instead of testosterone, to, to push the native testicle harder and not replace it with outside testosterone, maintain fertility, and keep the system, keep the organ exercising so it doesn't atrophy, and they can have maybe get off of it later, or depends what, you know, what the cause is, but anyway, end up maybe curing them instead of treating them.